Hey guys, welcome to Archland. So we're here to talk about Valak, not Balak. We're talking about her build guide and we're starting off with a couple of details and with her strength and weakness. Okay, strength wise, she heals, um, has damage, particularly on the ignite side. So again, she's going to be very, very nice in close quarters. Once you get to heal your front line, then the enemy gets ignite. And again, she also puts out a big buff. So again, it will depend on how you build her. We're going to be discussing more of that later. Next is improving her weakness with regard to physical defense and her HP. So those are the areas that you need to improve on. And going back to her equipment, I've equipped her this way because I wanted to emphasize more. Again, you have physical defense, of course, with the with the um, the robe, and more or less HP is what I want to emphasize here because you can add more HP in terms of percentage depending on again the accessory and also depending on the equipment okay so the equipment is going to be crucial as well in terms of hp we'll go to her unique equipment later so those are her strengths and weaknesses and what to improve we will have to go back here this is going to be her unique passive it's about it's quite a bit long okay she starts off with four stacks of Star Fragment on herself after casting a skill on an ally. So grants her uh, grants that ally a power of life for two turns. So what is power of life? Power of life is before the battle, recover HP equal to a certain percentage. As you rank up, the percentage you know grows up depending on um, melee attack. Sorry, magic attack. So, again, magic attack of her, not the ally. So, again, there is it's 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 going to be a good um, good complement because again, um, it's going to complement her actual healing and also heal over time. So, power of life. So, the star fragment, of course, is going to be um, diminished. They are stacks when she she casts a skill okay so increase it it was okay going back to the star fragment the star fragments are there those are stacks because it increases melee attack um depending on again her rank three four five six percent per stack so when you lose one of the buff after casting a skill and there is no skill cast during a certain term you gain one stack back so casting uh, you take one stack off, then you put, um, what do you call this, uh, power of life to an ally. That is the mechanic. It's kind of complex. You'll get used to it. Uh, then when you don't cast something, you gain a stack. And after an enemy dies, instantly gain up to four stacks of the buff. The buff can't be removed or stolen. So again, stacks are there. They're used to increase uh, magic attack, not melee attack, sorry. Magic attack. But when you cast something, you give an ally power of life, you remove one stack. Okay? That's simple. Kinda. Okay. So next, we're going to explore her traits here. Okay. For traits again, you will have to prioritize whether you're going to take the top row or the bottom row or tree. So... You, we call it a row, you call it a tree. It really depends upon you. So we're talking about the top tree first or the top row. Okay, so after using a skill, this one, after using a skill, you're going to have a self-heal here. I don't think she needs this because she heals a lot already. And the next one is, is for me, most important of the top because um, she can heal... This is what I mentioned earlier. She can heal um, your front row, uh, remove a debuff from them. Then, if there are enemies attached to, th to them in the front row, they also get ignite. Which is nice. 
right? So this one is gonna come in handy, especially if you are in bottleneck, especially in PvP. This skill is, for me, is going to be handy in PvP. Um, you have to take uh, note of that if you want to build the top tree or row. Okay, so moving to the bottom row, bottom tree again, uh, this skill. So heal one and damage to the enemies around. So this is going to be uh, kind of a mini, um, the mini version of this one, this skill. So heal and damage around. The next one is this one. So the fires of God. This one gives three debuffs. Uh, sorry, three buffs to one ally. Okay, take note of that. This is one of her um, important skills to consider when you want to choose top or bottom. So three buffs. Um, the three buffs here to one ally. Um, it's going to include increase in in physical attack and and magic attack by 20 percent that's one immunity to debuffs that um affect physical attack and magic attack and after receiving an attack additional damage if the target survives so that is based on the ally that you're gonna be you know they're gonna be giving this buff to so if that ally attacks it gives an additional damage if the target survives. So it's 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 a very, very nice skill to have, especially if you have a very powerful beat stick, let's say a DPS unit or a hero that you want to further enhance the damage that, you know, you, if, if you can one-shot something, why not? So again, this is going to be very good. The 20% increase in physical and magic attack is going to be very 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 nice so highly consider this and this buff is going to be available for three turns take note of that three turns three turns is a lot so this skill and this skill will rival you know uh your choice because both of them might be important in pvp but <clears throat> Again, the bottom row for me is um, has some uniqueness to it that I think it's a must that you go with the bottom row. I'll you know I'll I'll discuss more on which row should you choose in a while. So it they have other skills or she has other skills as you can see here. So this one, so heal all, reduce physical damage by twenty percent. Not sure. I think it's twenty percent. I think so. So this one, if they encounter physical damage, is going to be reduced by 20%, which is a lot as well. Okay. The next one is going to be passive recovery of allies. Heal and yeah, passive recovery of allies for this one. So passive recovery, I think this is going to be recovery over time. And the last one, which is the first one, is going to be heal and debuff removal. So again, she has a lot of heals in her kit that I don't think she needs this first skill for the top row. That's only for herself. That's selfish. <laughs> okay, so um, based on all of the discussion, I am actually building her with the bottom row and I'm recommending the bottom row as well. Now here we are with the rune, um, rune equipment. I would suggest, again, because she's a healer, you have to have the cross, of course. Um, since she does secondarily magic attack, therefore, you need to have the eye for magic attack. Other options for the eye would be the staff, because the staff is also magic attack for two sets. Of course, for for the for this one, this is going to be surely for uh, four sets for healing. Okay, so this one, uh, magic attack. So you need to have a magic attack for a secondary set. I don't think the eye and the staff are going to be you know going to be replaced. If you're going to use this one, this is going to be magic penetration. Um, I'd rather that you use magic attack instead instead of magic penetration. So there you go for your equip rooms my recommendations 
So far as her unique weapon, so it's Ashes of Salvation. So additional stats for you guys. Ashes of Salvation also plus four melee attack. Sorry, not. I always tend to mistake M for melee. So magic attack. Magic attack plus four plus one percent magic defense. Okay. This is the special activation by Valak. Increase the healing done to allies power of life by 3%. So it's an additional 3%. The existing one is going to be power of life. Let me see. It's 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 okay. It's uh, based on melee attack. But this one has an increase of plus 3%. Allies with power of life will remove one debuff from self before the battle. Again... This is also going to be good because this is providing you an additional free uh, removal of debuff. So take note of that. Take note of that. So again, the unique whip weapon is also a must for her because this really enhances what she can do. So removal of debuff and giving, uh, you know, healing her allies. Okay, guys. So for the hero experience, let us sample this. And what she can do. First, you have to move forward here. And this one is... This is a single character recovery. This one is the one that I mentioned that uh, inflicts Ignite. So, you have to move forward because it's a grid-based. If you don't move forward, not everybody will be affected. Especially the back uh, enemy there. So, you have to move forward, inflicting heal... Uh, sorry, putting heal... And putting Ignite. How good is that? How good is that? Okay. So let's uh, finish the action out with the allies participating in this battle. So we have Tito, Vic, and Joey on the floor. For Filipinos, you'll understand who they are. But it's going to be Tito, Vic, and Joey. Okay. So next up... Uh, see, they're healing. They're healing. Power of life. That is why you have power of life. Because your front line can withstand a lot. Okay. So next up. This one is going to be... Recovery again. So recovery within range. So do the recovery this is going to be, I think, her ultimate skill. Wow. So they, they're going to be very, very pissed. Nice. With all of those shards. So, as you can see, she can really, really hold the line. Depending really on, on what, you know, tree you're going to be getting. We have one left. And we'll see what we will do. So, ally turn. So, again, lots of heals for her. This one, um, let's go back. Fix damage. Let's heal this guy here. There you go. Another damage. Another round. There you go. See? That was easy. She's actually fun to use. Um, given the right build. Given the right situation. But um, again, I think this one was based on the build on the top. So that's the showcase for you guys. Okay, so final thoughts for you guys. Um, preference for me is the bottom. The bottom, you know, the bottom trait, as you can see here. The bottom trait is nice. Um, because for me, it, um, she, depending on how, which, uh, how will you use her, she will be my secondary here, healer. Um, um, next, first will be Glafarea. So, Clafare will be in charge of, uh, if you need to bring two healers, she'll be the second one. Clafare is overall healing. For her, she's going to do debuffs and healing. 
um, if you want her to be uh, more of a frontline protector and damage over time, you know, uh, type of uh, priest, then go for the top. Me personally, I would recommend the bottom because I would want her to dish out that very, very big of a buff. And overall, her kit would not be as bad as a healer. So again, recommendation would be the bottom, but both kits, but both trees or both rows are not that bad. They are good. It really depends on your preference. Okay, I'm giving you the option to choose but again my recommendation is the bottom tree preference based on what i'm going to build okay so that is it so again she's really fun i think she's going to be the second best healer to clafare overall that i've seen um and hopefully uh you can also build her um you can also summon for her by the way for those who were shocked that i have her already um I pulled her off camera and um, it took me probably seven single pulls and one ten pull. So I just had fun with it. Uh, I said to myself, let, let, let me just spend some here off camera and, uh, you know, who knows? I might get her. But in the end, I did. So sorry, wasn't able to create that video and wasn't able to share that with you. But again, I have her going to build her up. Um, as global comes in, the builds might change because by that time I could probably use all the skills up to the last one and, uh, there might be changes. There might be not. So look forward to that. So thank you very much guys for staying this far. Take care, stay safe. This is the warden and I'm out of here.